Hi guys, my name's Jake Barrett from the Barrett Film Company. I hope you're well. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about why video is no longer a luxury and why it's a really essential part of your marketing plan. So, wanted to start with a little bit about myself, just to give you a little bit of background. So I've been working in the industry now of film and video for around about eight years. Um, started in the world of television. Um, I worked as an operator um, and a self-shooter for shows such as The Gadget Show and Children's Hospital for Channel 4. Um, and then I very quickly moved into the world of commercials. So I was working for various different production companies, um, producing their commercials, out directing commercials, editing that sort of stuff. Um, I then worked in agency for an international marketing agency as their head of film. Um, so I handled all of their clients there. Um, and then it's kind of come full circle now really and it's under my own production company. So Barrett Film Company is where I'm at now. So I just wanted to start with the stats for film and a little bit about why it is such a powerful marketing tool. Um, so I'm just going to read through these with you now. Um, so first of all, video marketing must equal profit. 88% of marketers confirm that they're happy with the return on their investment. So that's really good to know. Video attracts 300% more traffic and helps to nurture leads. A website is 53 times more likely to reach the front page of Google if it includes video. So obviously that's a huge improvement just by using some, some, some simple video on your website. 50% uh, of internet users search for videos relating to a product or service before visiting the store. So of course that's something really important to consider and 81% of businesses use video as a marketing tool and that's up from 63% on the year before. So as you can see, there's a huge improvement there of people who are embracing video and who are using it as part of their marketing strategies. A few more for you here as well. 64% of all consumers will make a purchase after watching a brand video. Video is expected to make up to 80% of of all internet, 82% sorry, of all internet traffic by 2021. So obviously that's a huge stat there. The amount of content, if you were to take all of that, they're estimating that 82% of it will be video. So a huge um, example there of how powerful the platform is. 97% of marketers say video has helped consumers to gain a better understanding of their products or services. Social video generates 1,200% more shares than text and image content combined. So that's, that speaks for itself really about how powerful the use of video is and how, how much more um, it generates in terms of shares over the use of images and text. Um, and then my favourite one to finish, uh, viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in a video compared to just 10% of the message when they read it in text. So again, you can see by how just producing videos and doing some sort of simple bits and pieces here and there can really help people to understand more about what it is that you're trying to tell them, what it is that you're trying to sell them or the service that you're trying to offer. The big thing that I'd like to take away from that is that if you're not using video, your competition will. And it's very much come to that now where there's so many people out there who are using video clearly, as we've just seen from the stats there. So if you're sort of sitting there thinking, oh, it's not quite right for me, um, then essentially you are going to lose out because your competition will be embracing that platform. So just some examples of success that I wanted to share with you. Uh, these are from my personal experience and in the ways that different companies have used video um, and have seen some fantastic results. The first example is for Worcester Bosch. So Worcester Bosch um, were a client of mine for around about four years um, at my previous production company. And basically they had a reputation of always embracing video but not really pushing the boundaries as much as they could have been. Um, in terms of the quality and the style and things like that. So, you know, they'd go out with DSLRs and they'd be shooting stuff. And we essentially went in and said to them, look, you know, you're an industry leading company. You're the number one boiler manufacturer in the UK. And therefore your marketing should absolutely resonate with that. And we pestered them and pestered them until they decided that finally they did want to take the plunge did some um, video content for them um, that was a lot higher in terms of quality, it was more thought out in structure um, and also it had a strategy behind it to make sure that it went out to the right audience and that absolutely set the precedent for them then. Um, you sort of saw that they were getting fantastic results from the content that we were producing but also it now set the boundary for them and, and the sort of level you know, of where their video should be so they'd always can come back to us and say 
you know, oh, we want a video, but actually, um, you know, we want a video like that one you did, but can you do it on this instead? And or we want something like what you did there, but on this issue here. So it kind of set that level for them. Um, co-op pharmacy, um, so co-op um, approached us um, at uh, the agency I was at before I was doing Barrett Film Company and basically asked um, us to do an advert for them to promote Viagra. Now, of course, it was a very strange brief, um, but it was one that we absolutely embraced, um, and we wanted to do a Sky Ad Smart campaign, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But just by using video and by doing a campaign, they actually managed to increase sales of the product by 119%, so it was a fantastic increase on sales there. And finally, uh, a recent project that I've put out on my uh, social pages, especially LinkedIn, was a factory tour video that we've done recently for a company called Alpha Laval. I simply put up a behind the scenes video of, uh, on one side, the behind the scenes footage from the actual day of filming, and then next to it, the end result and what it looked like. And the video looked that slick and the um, audience were that sort of impressed with it, it's actually generated a lot of inquiries. So that shows that even from my end, by just using bits of behind the scenes video, I can really increase the exposure of my work and, and obviously generate sales in that way. So I wanted to share an example with you here, um, which is probably in history, one of the most successful campaigns that I can remember and can think of. Um, I'm not sure if any of you remember, um, but Tipex did a campaign um, around about 10 years ago now, where they actually did an interactive advertisement on YouTube. So you simply had a hunter who's out in a field on this YouTube video in his tent and as he's sitting in there um, a bear approaches the tent and you see him like oh my god oh my god what shall I do shall I shoot the bear shall I do this and he basically turns to the camera his hand comes out of the YouTube video and grabs the tipex that's on the advertisement next to the video and he smudges out where it says the title of shooter uh, sorry uh, camp, um, hunter shoots a bear and it basically then it pops it into a box so that you can actually, as an audience, type what you want the guy to do to the bear. So it might have been, um, you know, Hunter plays football with a bear, Hunter um, has a romantic dinner with a bear, and it was allowing the audience to actually come up with those scenarios, and they'd film so many of the scenarios that there was always a new answer, and there was always a new video that you could watch. And it was the first time that I'd ever seen anything like that done. It was a really innovative way of using video. Um, and you notice that instead of spending, you know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds watching an ad, you were actually sitting there for 10, 15 minutes, just trying all the different things, basically, and engaging with the brand. And that's exactly what it was all about. So from that, um, Tipex, in 36 hours, managed to have a million views of the video on YouTube. It had 100,000 shares on Facebook and an average of one tweet every second. So you can see that how by doing this interactive video, they were really able to increase exposure for Tipex. And then in total, they received 46 million views on YouTube, um, over a million shares on Facebook, and 220,000 tweets. So it had so much um, interaction and shareability on Facebook and on the social pages that it meant that the campaign was a huge success. But what did that mean for sales? Well. They saw a 30% increase on the European sales. So that's an absolutely fantastic number. And if that just shows you the power of video and why to them it's no longer a luxury. And also just remember that this was 10 years ago. So this was just as Facebook was starting to become something. Um, and, and basically we were starting to get used to it as an audience. So there's different ways that you can use video as a brand and I just wanted to run through some of these with you now. Um, of course there's the big stuff, you know, you can do your commercials, there's PR stunts where you might do something in, you know, in public. For example, if you were selling a, a bed or a new mattress, you might simply put that bed or mattress in the middle of a town square and have people engaging with the product, telling them to come and have a lie down basically and sort of people getting hands on with it and filming that experience. Um, social campaigns um, and interactive video, so they're all the big things that you can do. But it's always the other stuff that means that basically you can always be putting content onto your social media platforms and onto your website, etc. So those things might include behind the scenes videos. People love to see things that they wouldn't usually see. For me, that's the way that we produce videos, but for certain companies, it's the way that they you know, manufacture a product, um, the way that they might carry out a service or something like that. Product videos are really good as well for uh, online use. Brand films, so what is it about your brand and, and the story of your company? 
Client testimonials are really good to show hands-on experience from real-world users of your product or service. Um, Instagram and Facebook stories are fantastic and of course you've now got the live feature in those as well so you can simply go live you could have interaction with a customer or with somebody who asks questions about your product or service and have that streaming out live um, and also highlights for the for the business as well so a lot of these are all about building awareness of your brand and showing that as a professional in your industry you know what you're talking about. So it doesn't always have to be a hard sell of, you know, buy this product, you know, etc. Just by simply sharing your thoughts on something as an industry professional um, is building that sort of influence that you have in the industry as such. Um, embracing new technology is something that I really recommend. Um, so at the moment, virtual reality or VR and augmented reality, um, AR, are, are really big um, topics in the industry. Virtual reality is essentially when a, a virtual world is built um, by computers. So that's fantastic technology that I've seen examples like um, estate agents use. So if somebody has basically bought a piece of land and they want to have a lovely farmhouse built on it, then the farmhouse is basically built in a totally virtual world, but then the person can simply put on the virtual headset and they can actually see the place for real. They can sort of have a look around it, they can sort of reach for things, they can get a size of the feel of it. And it's a great way to just bring something to life essentially than it just being on a piece of paper. Augmented reality is slightly different, so that's basically where you've got footage of a real world environment, but then there's computer generated images within that world. So for example, if you were a factory, you might have um, a certain experience that you might have de uh, developed where basically you have a phone that's um, showing us around the room, but actually as we're looking at the factory floor, there might be you know, sort of arrows or little descriptions of what you can see in the frame and all of that is computer generated and that's part of augmented reality. Drone footage as well, um, of course drones have been around for a while now, um, but it's something that we're starting to see being used in a different way. Great example of this is there's some little racing drones that you can get and I'm seeing people using them to show off um, things like go-karting tracks for example, where the go-karts are going around and the drones are simply flying behind them um, in a really sort of exciting way to just show the real experience from almost a first person view really from what the go-karts can see, that's really cool. But also properties are using them as well. Some of the drones are very small nowadays and that means that actually you can fly them inside, you can sort of move you know, through different levels of buildings and things and that means that if you've got a new property that's been developed or a new commercial office space, you can showcase that space in a really nice way um, rather than just doing brochure images and, and obviously blogs and things like that online. Another thing that I wanted to discuss with you was how you can embrace new platforms and this is something that I recommend everybody does. A great example for this and the latest um, sort of social platform that everybody's utilising at the moment is TikTok. And a great person um, as an example is the Black Country Museum who's recently built up a really strong following on TikTok. Now obviously it's, very, it's a great case study because they've managed to get 360,000 followers in four months on the platform and that basically puts them in the top 100 UK accounts. The reason that that's such a great example is because you think about the Black Country Museum, you know, it's a museum, it's something that might be seen as a little bit old school, of course um, the, the actual setting itself is, is old and it's very traditional, however they've embraced this new platform that is made for younger, the younger generation and basically sort of put the two together and just absolutely gone for it using all of the core features within TikTok but in the theme of the Black Country Museum and there's not many people that have done that yet and I think that's a great example of if you're sitting there and you're thinking oh it's not quite right the platform for me yeah but the audience is a little bit young for me there's no excuse for it basically um, and that sort of takes me on to this final point here which is if it's hot right now make content for it doesn't matter if it's a platform that might not necessarily be around in two years time, a year's time, if that's where the audience is right now and that's where they're engaging and you're finding that the majority of people are really engaged on a platform, make content for it, utilise it, get your brand in front of those people because I can guarantee that you'll see the results from that. Um, the use of film as well and video is also really accessible these days. You know, naturally everybody has a phone that shoots great video and if that's all that you can afford at the moment, that's absolutely fine. Like, that's not a problem whatsoever. 
there's still some great things that you can do. Obviously, the TikTok one is a perfect example for that, but that just shows that it takes away the, the high budget um, restraints that people get concerned about when it comes to creating content. Production companies these days are also becoming more and more flexible and we're having to do that. I mean, of course, we've realised that the world has changed and therefore we've had to do so as well. You know, gone are the days where you're always getting 20, 30,000 pound brand films. You're seeing a lot more these days of short, snappy social content. So it's that quick reactive stuff where we're basically picking up on recent trends, recent topics. Again, TikTok's a great example of a recent trend. And then we're utilizing that and we're having to produce content for that. So instead of having one big video for say 30,000 pounds, you're finding that you're producing a suite of 10 or 20 different videos that are smaller sections, but they're actually used over a longer period of time. So it increases, of course, the longevity of that campaign, but means that you can pick up on different trends and topics along the way as well. And finally, TV advertising no longer has to be seen as a crazy investment. So this is, of course, thanks to a platform called Sky Ad Smart. And I know that there was a talk this morning about this from uh, David Sanderson at Sky. So um, hopefully you've managed to check that out a couple of hours ago. Um, but basically, Sky Ad Smart is a platform that allows you to do targeted advertising onto broadcast television. So instead of putting out an advertisement and it costs £150,000 to put it out between the, the ITV break on the X Factor, for example, and you go, that's great, we've reached you know 12 million people or whoever many are actually watching the show at the time. The, the issue with that is the fact that you don't really know what those results are. Okay, great, it's gone out to all those people, but actually out of that 12 million of them, how many of them are actually people who you want to buy your product? Who are the relevant audience in there? It may only be 500,000 of them. And if that's the case, why pay 12, you know, the money to get out to 12 million people? Well, that's where Sky Ad Smart comes in, and it basically means that you can target your advertisement to those specific audiences of people. Um, so if I had Sky um, and my neighbour had Sky, but we were a different age group of people or a different demographic, then in an ad break for the same show, I would receive a different set of advertisements to my neighbour would. And that's because they're all targeted and tailored for the person. And that means that you're no longer spending thousands on thousands trying to get in front of all those people on broadcast TV. You're just paying for that audience that you need to get in touch with and the right audience for you. And of course, it means that you've got better results there as well of how that campaign performed. So one of the final points that I just wanted to talk about was um, how you shouldn't sell people on a product, but in fact, sell them on a story and an experience um, instead. And you find that this is what a lot of the successful brands in the world do. If we take Apple, for example, yes, they might be promoting a new iPhone or their AirPods, um, you know, or whatever it may be, a new Mac or an iPad. However, you'll find that actually the iPad itself or the product features um, as a secondary sort of focus in the video or the advertisement. And that's because it's all about selling people into a lifestyle. So if they show somebody who's got an Apple Watch and they're doing, you know, using the features of the Apple Watch, but they've got this fantastic lifestyle that we all aspire to have, then that is how they sell their products because people aren't actually going and buying an Apple Watch, they love what Apple means as a brand and the lifestyle that, that, comes, that comes with it. And that's why they're so successful because they've really targeted their marketing down that way. So video, um, as you can see, that's why, of course it should be seen as one of the most powerful tools in your marketing armory. And of course the stats speak for themselves when it comes to that, obviously with the fact that 82% of all internet traffic um, will be video by the end of 2021. This is absolutely the year to embrace it. And I know that there's restrictions at the moment with COVID and people think that there's not too much that they can do, but actually there is, there's more ways now than ever that you can be embracing video in your brand. Um, a great example of this, just to finish up, is um, we've recently been producing some factory tour videos for people. So whereas normally they would have people who come down to the factory and they physically have a tour of the facilities, we're actually doing that in a video and they're sending that out to them on emails um, or on social media and everything as well, um, instead of, of actually doing that in person. So COVID doesn't have to be a restriction. There's ways that you can film this. Um, during the course of the current lockdown, we are able to film. Um, and even if businesses are closed, they're allowed to open for the activities of filming to take place. And of course, it's all done in a COVID safe way. But embrace all of the things that I've just said. Utilize the new technology. 
that's out there. Um, get interacting with some of the new platforms. And as I said, if it's hot right now, make content for it. Thank you very much.